Crossroads Media. All right, before we get started here, for all the wrestling fans out there, come on, baby. Yeet! You know what I'm saying? All right, now if you're listening to this on the audio side of things, you have no clue. Um, and if you're interested, we do have some audio platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcast. If you leave a five-star rating and a review, that will help out tremendously. But I'll shut up. Let's talk about the Phillies game, huh? Well, the Phillies homestand. They go four and two. Pretty good. Pretty good. I wish it was five and one. Of course, we are recording on an afternoon where they lose to the Nationals, and it's never fun watching Rob Thompson pretty much admit that he doesn't give two shits about the win because you go down swinging with Cal Stevenson who rolls into a double play after Edmundo Sosa gets on for a leadoff single down two runs. That's a disgrace, Topper. And then, to make it even worse, Garrett Stubbs grounds out. Hold on a second. Bryce Harper's in the double out. Bryce Harper is waiting for his turn. You're down two runs. Two runs. There's somebody on first. You do know that Bryce Harper has the ability to jack up a two-run bomb, right? Stubbs stinks. You do know JT can do better than Garrett Stubbs, right? I'm just saying, dude, I don't get it. That's waving the white flag. And I really shouldn't be that aggravated with the 4-2 and two home stand. so I hate that that's short of the first thing flying out of my mouth, but it's the most recent thing that I just consumed about six minutes ago. So why is he falling asleep at the wheel? That's loser mentality. That's what it is, Rob. You started finally to make me feel good again. Truly, I started to look at moments, and we'll discuss them all. Trey Turner, walk-off, and the guy has been getting hits almost every single at-bat since he was removed from the lineup and placed back in. So good for you, Trey, including a damn walk-off. Even Even though the Nationals sort of handed it to you, you know, with Brandon Marsh getting a hit and then getting a free base to second, they're throwing the ball all around, Stevenson with a bun, and now he gets on base, nobody gets out, Trey Turner, how do you do, nice and lovely, you win a ball game, yes, the Nationals blow, but still, the fact that it's Trey, who's been crosshairs of blame and this is coming after a fantastic grand slam from Kyle and you also got the Weston Wilson cycle so as you're seeing there's something that is highly emotional that's going down consistently on a night-to-night basis so for Trey to follow the leader here and to do it as well when it's his opportunity knowing that Rob was not happy with him and took him out of the lineup I think that that's massive And then you got a Christopher Sanchez complete game action of 99 pitches. Guy was phenomenal. Straight up phenomenal. Less than 100 pitches. This guy goes nine. He goes the distance. That is outrageous. So once again, a highly emotional moment that goes in the favor of the Phils. And that's not all that happened in that Saturday afternoon game. We got... Awesome hits in the sixth inning, and they weren't just relying on the long ball. We can run down the list. Trey Turner with a double. Boehm with a single. Nick with a single. JT with a single. And Mundo Sosa with a single. Rojas with a single. Bang, 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 bang. Just getting the job done and moving through your lineup to give you a 5-1 to lead. It was tied 1-1 in that sixth inning on Saturday night. So for them to have the response that you needed from your lineup and um, able to produce, because if you remember, there was a lot of upset fans on how they didn't pounce on Patrick Corbin a night before as much as they should, right? 2 nothing lead. Estevez in the game in the ninth, and he gave it up. And a lot of fans were so disappointed with the offense. How could you only score two runs against a pitcher that leads the league and losses over the X amount of years? His ERA has been through the roof. And I understand, I do, it is aggravating. At the end of the day, though, if your closer is getting the ball with a two-run lead in the ninth inning, you have to shut it down. That's the rules. That's the rules. I can't take any sort of criticism off of Estevez and start applying it to the order 
I, I get it. I want more runs than two. But when it's all said and done, games are going to play out how they're going to play out through eight innings. If you could get the ball in the closer's hands in the ninth against a bad Washington team, you have one job. Win the game. You have one damn job. Win the game. So, yes, I wish it was 5 nothing, 6 nothing, 9 nothing. 10 nothing. I want it to be way more against Patrick Corbin. It wasn't. Sure, disappointing. Ninth inning, game on the line. Your closure has a two-run lead. So if it's 7-5 instead of 2 nothing, do you feel differently about blowing the lead? Two-run lead. Get it done. I'm angry with the Steves. And there are signs of some of the bullpen leaking oil. As we saw with Matt Strom and Jeff Hoffman in this final game against Washington, they both allowed some runs. Strom, lucky that it was only one. He had the bases loaded. They get the one out at home plate. It probably could have been a lot worse. And then Hoffman got rocked. This thing was smoked. I still can't believe when the game wasn't over yet, though, Rob Thompson essentially admitted, yeah, we don't give two dams about the result of this one. We're happy that we at least already won the first three of this series. So the fourth one, eh, we could toss that up as an L if we want to. I'm cool with Bryce not playing. I get it. Sometimes Bryce Harper will take a day off. Truly, not that pissed off about it. I'm pissed off with the lack of usage late, though. The game's still in hand. It's a two-run game in the ninth when you have a man on first. That type of stuff makes me lose sleep. Can't wait to hear what Rob's description is of that. Can't wait. I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know what else would have been awesome, though? About this, if you could find a way to to make some noise here. What have I been stressing about these wins, even against poor opponents? It's less about who you're facing and more about, to me, the highs of the team. How the clubhouse is feeling. The energy. The having fun again. Going to the ballpark with the purpose. It was all starting to flow in the right direction. They were moving as one in the proper light. And instead, now there's this negative taste in my mouth. Imagine if you were able to go to Atlanta. Now you're leaving CBP. You're leaving South Philadelphia. You're going to see a big-time rival who's been underperforming, but you're going to Truist Park. And if you could have had another one of those moments under your belt where the Bryson Stott, Brandon Marsh, back-to-back bombs had more impact, now it's just sort of something that they missed out on. Grabbing onto that life and that energy shift due to two kids that have been struggling mightily in Stott and Marsh, it doesn't really have the juice anymore. Could you imagine if Bryce did something special, though? How much more that back-to-back home run sequence means? And then you roll into Atlanta with it going? Of course, I don't know if Bryce hits a two-run jack. But what if he hits a single? And then it's first and second, no outs? A single still would have been lovely. Especially because we know what some of the top guys have been doing lately. Turner's getting a hit almost every at-bat. Nick is so good. This version of Nick, this Nick, Nick is so good. Listen to these numbers that Matt Gelb tweeted out in the middle of the game. For everybody who rips Kevin Long, because, quote, the approach is abysmal, he stinks, he's bad, why isn't he fired? Kyle Schwarber has been a monster this season. His batting average is over 250. Kyle Schwarber's been great. Nick Castellanos has been great. When Trey's on fire, it's been great. 
Kevin Long has plenty of examples on why he shouldn't be fired throughout the tough stretches of the offense. Just to be fair, I feel like he never gets any love when guys like Nick actually perform at a super high rate or Kyle Schwarber, he was hitting under 200 last year with 50-something bombs. Hey, we got to work on some things. We got to tweak some things. We got to, you know, go to town here on the tape to figure out exactly how you can be the best version of yourself that will tremendously help out this baseball team as a leadoff hitter too. And he's done that and some. But anyway, Nick Castellano, since May 1st, he's hitting 268. Since June 1st, he's hitting 284. Since July 1st, he's hitting 290. And since August 1st, he's hitting 315. That's fantastic stuff. Unfortunately, there's some other stats I have here bookmarked. Taiwan Walker's day comes to an end. Four and two-thirds, three earned runs, three walk batters, two home runs hit, 99 pitches, 61 strikes. His energy really does deflate the team. All right, I've been on the record in the past saying I would take him over some of these other arms, and as you see, they removed Tyler Phillips from the equation, and I'm talking about those level of performers, to be fair. But you know what? Even if there's someone who's worse, I think the team feels better just from a morale standpoint when it's not Walker on the bump. So I would take a worse version of a starter over Taiwan now. It has gotten to the point where I am beaten down so much that I don't even care. Oh, two count, home run, game's tied. He he gives me loser vibes. He does. So I'm over it. I don't think there's any way of getting out of that now. He had 27 pitches in the first inning. Four batters. Um, I thought, uh, you know, I, I thought the first inning would be even rougher. It wasn't fun watching. That's for damn sure. Oh, no. I tweeted out how mad I was at Topper. And the first reply that I see is Topper needs to go. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Andy, who I love, says, I'm over Topper and his boneheaded decisions. This is after four and two, man. I love it. Rob is, oh, okay, hold on. I can't say that. Can't say that. Can't say that. A manager who wanted to actually win that game would have pinch hit JT and Harper in the ninth. Fire Topper. Oh, jeez. It literally irritates me when Rob does shit like this. Like, why can't Bryce or JT swing a bat on their day off? It's a, it's a fair point, Taylor. All right, my notifications are flooded. <laughs> Still nothing from the manager, huh? All right, we will wait this out. Popper, you're not getting the uh, you're not getting away without explaining yourself, Mister. I want all the details. All right, listen, we'll get to the Anytime Hotline in one second. First, Chris Gates Fitness and his online fitness training camp is something that you need to check out. Chris is an online fitness coach, and he's been coaching for over six years. If you're ready to elevate your health and fitness goals and do it with a group of like-minded people, you have to check out his training camp. There's so much packed in, and I saw everything when I joined up and was truly blown away. There's customized monthly workout programs that will help Help build muscle, burn fat, and feel more athletic. There's access to live Q&As with Chris. There's exclusive community support. And right now, weekly football pickums are about to get rolling at the end of August, where winners get free supplements from Legion Athletics. And in September, there's going to be a step count challenge where the winner gets a free walk pad treadmill. You do not want to miss out. If you use promo code BRODES, you will get 50% off on your your first month. So visit chrisgatesfitness.com slash training camp or click the link in the description. Once again, use code BRODES for 50% off your first month. Okay, with that, let's take a listen to the people. BRODES, Sunday's game just ended, and I can't believe this. I cannot believe it. Walker, you know he's going to suck, but you don't expect Strom and Hoffman to suck too. But what makes it even worse is Topper. That's absolutely ridiculous. You're going to go down with Kyle Stevenson batting 
and Harper sitting on the bench. You're going to go down with Garrett Stubbs batting and Real Nuto, Harper, other guys on the – Weston Wilson on the bench. I understand he wants to get these guys off their feet, JT especially, but this is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't expect them to win every game, but you at least have to put in an effort. Cal Stevenson and Garrett Stubbs, you got home runs from Stott and Marsh. Hopefully that kicks them into another gear. This is absolutely ridiculous and uncalled for. I sure as hell hope that this is our last season with Hopper. I can't stand his decision-making. That's ridiculous. You've got to go down with your best gun, and he didn't do that. Have a good one. I appreciate the phone call. I'm just as angry as everybody else is on Topper. Trust me, if you've been paying attention to anything I've said, which is a scary thing, but if you pay attention to anything that I've said over the last three months or so, I've lost my cool about Rob. I'm not going a step farther, though, and making claims about his job status and not wanting him to be the manager of my team, which I know sounds hypocritical because if I'm not happy with him, you would think it wouldn't make sense to want him here. Um, I don't understand all of his logic, but I still think he brings a lot to the clubhouse at the same time. But anyway, just want to get that stance out there. I'm pissed at Rob, and something that I do completely agree with that you're mentioning is... If you lose a game, so be it. Nobody expects you to win 130 games, and that's your record. It doesn't happen. You will lose, and you will probably lose games to teams like Washington in a four-game set. Three and one against a team that bad makes a lot of sense. Okay, you can live with that result from a just a, a general sense. But at least go down with your best talent. At least go down giving it your best shot. So when you sleep at night, you're fully aware that I did everything to put my team in the best position possible to win the game. And he doesn't do that every night. Now, if that's just the long approach of the regular season to get the best version of Bryce and JT in the playoffs, here's what I need. Because I have a feeling that's going to be their out. They don't put that much of an emphasis on this game at the end-ish of August. Because they want Bryce and JT to be as fresh as they can be for the postseason. Well then, Bryce can't do what he did last year. And when this offense goes poof and evaporates and goes, goes quiet... Part of the reason why he didn't get this at bat from what I'm reading and from what I'm understanding is because they wanted to give him a day off. They want to give him fully a day off. We've heard that from Topper a billion times. Well, there's a reason why. Why? Oh, so he's fresher, which as if one at bat is going to change or a total of five or six at bats because Bryce doesn't have off often. So we're talking about one at-bat in a pinch-hitting situation throughout 162. This, this scenario we're even talking about could be three or four at-bats over a four-month span. That's not going to be the difference in Bryce Harper being fully ready to go and, um, you know, in the best shape possible for the playoffs. Four at-bats. So if he has four more at-bats, that's the difference in him going quiet or not in the playoffs. So you know what? Scratch everything I just said. It's bullshit. It's bullshit that he's not playing at the end of this game. (laughs) There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. I was going to bring up, all right, if Bryce goes off and he ends up rocking 5,000 homers in the playoffs, he carries this team to the World Series, and his at-bats are strong as hell in October. He says, this is what it was all about, getting him to the finish line and letting him produce because he's one of the best in the game. But you know what? The last thing I think about if he's 
cooking this fall and carrying the entire city on a magical journey. The last thing that I think is the correlation is because of the one at bat, you didn't bat him in the ninth inning against the Nationals. Like, that's not why he's doing this. He's doing this because he's great. And he's so great that I want him in the game in the ninth to try and win a game when Mundo Sosa gets on first. <sighs> He does irritate me. It's good, Amadeo. At face value, taking three or four is a very good thing for this team because they just desperately needed to win a series like this. Even though going into it, I demanded a sweep. I can live with three and four, even though I'm really disappointed in not getting that sweep. There was a lot of good things that happened in the series. And the one thing that I do take away from it is Trey Turner looks fully locked in ever since his quote-unquote benching or just the off day, as Topper called it, you know, he took full advantage of that, and it looked like Trey Turner is fully responding to that. But it can't go without criticism in this final game. Well, one, Tywin Walker is just terrible, and he's going to always be terrible. <laughs> but not even pinch hitting JT or Bryce in the ninth inning, when you have a chance to tie it after Sosa gets the leadoff hit, how do you not pinch hit either of your best guys there? Why are you going down living with Stevenson and Stubbs? I don't get that. And then you got what you deserve going with those two guys. It's just Rob Thompson has this – I know the, the locker room loves him, but he has this stupid mentality of guys, when they have a full day off, they need to have the full day off. You had a chance to tie the game there and possibly come back into the game that night if you use Bryce and JT, and I would have fully lived and died with those two guys, understandably. It's just, Rob sometimes does some really moronic shit, and that really pisses me off, but yeah, big, big, bigger picture, three or four, is good. Now please win against the Braves. No, I think everything you said is pretty much spot on for sure. Now, Rob did speak, and he said that he's given them a full day thinking about the long term. Wanted to give Bryce and JT a full day off. Yeah, it's irritating because you're acting as if one at-bat is going to change the outcome of the playoffs. But whatever. I mean, it is what it is. Nothing's going to change at this point. This is who Rob Thompson is. This is how he manages things. I'm just a little shocked. Just knowing Bryce Harper and his fire and his competition level, I'm wondering how he handled this. You know, whenever I get a chance to talk to Bryce next, if I was a media member, I'd be like, yo, what were you kind of thinking? Were you ready to go? Did you have the donut on your bat? Did you have your batting gloves ready to, you know, get put on and strapped up? Because you would think Bryce walks up to Rob. I got it. I got it. I got it. And this is no knock on Bryce. I'm just saying I would figure that he's someone who would have that piss and vinegar and that pep in his step to walk up to Rob who might have one knee on the steps and the dugout. And he's like, this is my time. I'm, I'm taking this. You don't get to call the shots here, Robert. Okay, it's my chance. It's my chance to call the shots. He didn't have that. He feels to be that type of guy. Very similar to Zach Wheeler. Give me the ball, damn it. Or any number one starter mentality. I want the bump. I'm not getting off this mound. You better not be coming to get me in the sixth inning with two outs when my pitch count is at 97. I'm getting through. I'm getting that seven innings pitched on my damn box score. We didn't get that from Bryce, though. I'm surprised. So I'm curious what he was thinking. Speaking of six and two-thirds, though, Aaron Nola, I do want to make sure he gets the love that he deserves because I thought he was sensational in this series. Six and two-thirds allowed zero earned runs. And as much as we saw Strom get a little wonky there, base runner, single, um, the walk, you know, not very good. Only giving up one, though, is significantly better than what I thought the outcome would be at that particular time late in the game Sunday afternoon. He did help clean up Aaron Nola's traffic in the seventh inning on, uh, what was that? Was that Friday? I think that one was Friday in this four-game set. Sometimes I lose track on these four-gamers. So that's um, sort of what I want to do, is just make sure I give Aaron Nola some love. I thought he was really good, really, really good. So again, I, I think moral of the story is this series is, and even dating back to the Marlins, even though they split 
one and one in a two game series against the Marlins. This four and two homestand had some things that I thought were impressive from a um an emotional level with this club. And they were playing so down, they looked so defeated. What I keep tweeting out is hashtag swag is back. I am seeing things out there that remind me the swag is in there and I do think it was turning the corner. Now unfortunately this disgusting decision made by Rob has somewhat left such a bad taste in me. It really has that maybe I'm not expressing how much I truly am proud of the Kyle Schwarber Grand Slam, the Sanchez complete game, the Aaron Nola efforts, and the Bryson Stodd, and the, the Brandon Marsh back-to-back homers, and the Trey Turner walk-off, and you know, you go down, or you were up 2-0, you let the Nationals come back, and it's 2-2, that could put you really down, especially when you're just coming off of a road trip where you were spiraling out of control, and you got swept by the Yankees before you even went out west, and you see a 2 nothing lead evaporate with one of your biggest acquisitions at the deadline coming in he screwed it all up it's easy to go dude you know we are crumbling we don't have the answers and within seconds Trey Turner pounces and helps you out so there's all this tremendous stuff going on from a morale perspective and uh, just the fact that I had to watch Topper do what he did come on I don't get it I don't get it it's actually pathetic the more and more you digest it Well, it's nice to see them take a series for once, and they've been playing really good this series. I don't care what anybody has to say about the Nationals not being that great of a team or whatever. They're playing good baseball. They're taking advantage of opportunities. They're hitting pitches. They're they're swinging at pitches to hit. I'm not bummed out by the series at all. I am a little annoyed by this behavior that Rob Thompson seems to be showing when it comes to using pinch hitters. His philosophy on giving people a day off is you've got to give them the whole day off. Like, if Harper's sitting today, he has to sit all nine innings. I'm not sure how much I like that because, yeah, playing the entire game is one thing, but getting up there for one at-bat is apparently too much? We're talking one at-bat that, at least statistically-wise speaking, he's probably going to get out, honestly. Or at worst, he's going to get on and have to run the bases once. Like, is this is one at bat really going to ruin the concept of your day off, Rob? I'm not sure I like that. Letting Stevenson and Stubbs bat in the ninth inning of this last game was just straight up a mistake. Maybe a little less so for Stevenson, since he actually can hit pretty decent. No, it's a mistake. But definitely so for Stubbs. Like... I don't know. Maybe Rob wants all hands on deck and healthy for the Braves series coming up, and I get that point of view, but every ball game counts, and losses against teams like to, like to teams like the Nationals are that much worse when you have to go up against teams like the Braves coming up. So I just would flip-flop the two in regards to what's worse. I mean, they're both tragic. Cal Stevenson over Bryce Harper is one of the most embarrassing decisions that Rob Thompson has ever made, and he's had some bad ones. I don't understand either why it's fully you-can't-do-anything mode. I'll try and spin a positive, though. For whatever it's worth, and I'm sure nobody wants to hear it, but I feel obligated to stress it. We'll never be in this predicament, I don't think, when the playoffs come around. Bryce is in the lineup. JT is in the lineup. We're not going to see a situation where Cal Stevenson and Garrett Stubbs are both in the game and Rob Thompson goes, yeah, you know what? I'm not pinch hitting for any of these guys. Like That's not going to happen. Now, to be fair, I have seen some disgusting decisions made from Rob not pinch hitting in the playoffs in a different way. Like when Johan Rojas was playing unacceptable baseball and had traffic on the bases with the chance for the offense to blow out Arizona. He stayed with his guy because he thought so much about his defense that it truly hurt the team. They did not break the game open. um, and, And that decision was tragic. So maybe it might not be this one in particular, but it could just be another lack of awareness of pinch hitting in general. Maybe it will come back to bite you in the rear end. I'm just trying trying to look for some positive. We'll never see Stubbs and Stevenson both in the game with Price and 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 um, JT kicking it, waiting for a late 
pinch hit at bat in the playoffs. So this can never come back to bite you in that sense. Still doesn't make me feel any better because why have I been aggravated with Rob? It's about the message. It's about the lack of urgency. He has none. And this just defines that. So I don't know what positive. I don't feel any different. I still hate it. It's a joke. All right, everybody. What are you going to do? Not a bad homestand. Four and two in six games. We'll see what happens when they get down to Atlanta. She'll, she'll be fun, I'm sure. Thank you guys all so much. I'll catch you on the next one.